Hi everyone and welcome to the next part in the series of air combat maneuvering. This part will be about, uh, about the loop or looping and it's a fairly easy maneuver. The execution is absolutely simple. You fly straight and level and just pull the stick back and hold it, hold it, hold it until you are straight and level again. Uh, that's exactly what we will do right now in the a 10 c uh, we won't fly each part in the L39 and I want to zap through the modules and use almost all available ones so we can see uh, the maneuvers are generally applicable when it comes to BFM. And you can even find yourself getting into BFM in the A10C. At least it can carry sidewinders. The reason I choose the A10 for the loop is that it's really stable while you are in the loop. This is a good practice if you have never flown loops before. The A10 lets you, yeah, well, it lets you get accustomed to the roller coaster feeling quite good, while you don't have to worry so much about actually flying it. Later on, we will try it in in another type, and we will see our workload increasing there. Okay, uh, jumping into the cockpit, we see we are flying straight and level. Let's take a quick note of our altitude and heading. We are at about 14,700 feet and flying, well, almost east. But as a reference point, we will take our waypoint straight up ahead, the little, the little rect rectangle here. Uh, of course, uh, our goal is to come out of the loop at the same altitude and flying in the same heading as before. But really, it doesn't matter so much in air combat maneuvering. Just like the barrel roll, the loop is uh, highly dynamic and can and should be fitted and adopted to our current needs or the flight path of our enemy. We will see loops or parts of a loop all over in the more advanced maneuvers. Okay, let me unpause it and I will show you my, my stick deflection, my access to the lower left. And now to fly a loop, I, I will just pull my stick back and just hold it there. Let me just balance it out a bit more. Okay, pulling back and now just hold it and I keep a watch out on my G's. I try to maintain about three G's in the first quarter or the first half. And you don't want to pull too hard here. Neither too hard, nor too less. Too less G will, will just eliminate any speed you have and will bring you into a stall. You don't want that. And too much G's, uh, well, too much G's are always bad. Just pulling, just pulling, just pulling. Now we come out into the bottom half. We can see the ground moving. Just some further pulling and we will see the, the horizon shortly and there it comes and the loop is finished. Almost the same direction and yeah, a little bit of altitude loss but that's okay. Initially we flew straight to our waypoint and this is, I don't know, one, two, three degrees. This isn't really, really much. Okay, let's fly uh, another loop and now while Pulling back on my stick, I deflected just just small amounts to the left or right with very, very, very small inputs in order to not bank. I want to keep my bank angle zero. This is rather simple here in the A10C uh, as the plane itself is quite stable at these uh, more or less high speeds. I mean, we entered the loop at about 270 knots, I think. And yes, okay, let me pause a bit. You can now see we have uh, a little bank angle, but our waypoint isn't straightly above. This is uh, this line. If you've never flown the A10C, this line guides you to your to your to your waypoint you selected, and this is uh, ultimately where we want to come out of the loop. So I will now deflect a little bit more to the left in order to bring this line straight up my uh, my pitch ladder. Let me unpause it again. Pulling a little bit of banking to the left and I just literally pulled the A10 into my waypoint. So let's try it another time, this time in the F86 and here we don't have any indication of our waypoint on our HUD so we have to fly it manually respectively with the help of our analog instruments, our compass and ADI. Okay, just trimming out a bit more 
while in the loop you want to make sure that you are centered all the time. This can be done with the help of your ADI. You see your bank uh, angle is, is reflected quite good within the instrument so keep that centered. I will focus on this little triangle for the first part of the loop. Um, you can cross check your heading and attitude at the at the point in the loop where you are completely inverted, so at the top of the loop. At the top of the loop you of course want to fly um, the the exact opposite direction you, you started the loop. So we are now flying almost heading 90 um, when we when we are in the inverted position in our loop on the on the very top we want to fly almost heading to 70. Okay so let's just do it. Powering up a bit and just pulling back, focusing on that a little triangle I told you about and just pulling a bit more focusing 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 and there the triangle will go away we are now at the 90 degrees mark coming down inverted doesn't look that bad completely inverted now almost heading 270 Cutting back on the throttles, still small corrections to the left and right, pulling a bit more, come round again. And now look on the compass, we are veered off to the left, so I just pull a bit to the right and level again. And we're out of the loop again in the same heading we started it, and that was our goal. Okay, to finish this lesson about the loop, let's take a last look at tech view, uh, both of the loopings we performed in the HNC. And actually there's nothing really spectacular to see here. Um, first, uh, first off, if you have never seen a looping before, you might wonder why it's not a perfect circle, but this is... Uh, this is uh, plausible because in the at the top of the looping we lost so much speed and we can't maintain that speed when going full vertical that we that we actually increased our turn rate so we just come around faster we, we come around faster while being slower so that uh, it gets quite of an egg more or less not really a looping anymore at least not a circle more of an egg that's uh, that's just physics. The more interesting part is if we take a look at the performed looping from the top view. We just came out of our first one, so let me pause right here and just veer around the view and you can actually see the difference in heading we got. Um, you just see we just uh, banged slightly to the left for the almost the whole looping and thus the difference in heading. You remember in the cockpit we had a difference about, uh, I don't know, two or three degrees to the right. Okay, let's come to the second looping. Let me, whoops, damn timeline. Let me just jump there. That's the second one. Looks like an egg again. And if we watch it from the top, you can see the difference in the heading is not that big anymore. I mean, I just pulled the plane literally into the waypoint. But to see how we achieved that, let's jump right here in and press play. Right at the top, you can see me when coming down, when almost above the ground, you can see me actually steering to the left about right now. You just could see me steering to the left and this was the correction that allowed me to to pull the plane into the waypoint. And yes, yeah, so that concludes it for today. Uh, stay safe up there. See you next time.